Let's take a look at a code example of how we can split up our data into training data and testing data. So just like before, we're going to need pandas, so let me import that in. And let's import in a CSV file and check out its shape. And what you're going to notice is the fact that we have uh, 30,000 rows and 16 columns inside of our data. Now, we're going to keep things a little bit simple here. That normally at this point, after you've loaded up your CSV file, you would probably do some exploration, start to get rid of some bad data, maybe bring data in from somewhere else, etc. We're kind of going the green path here where everything's just going to work for us. So we're, we're making our lives a little bit easier, um, admittedly, but um, in, the, uh, in the real world, there'd still be a little bit of work that, um, uh, that you would have to, uh, to do here. So 30,000 uh, rows, 16 columns. Let's go ahead and start to uh, break down uh, all of that information into the appropriate spots. So we're going to use the distance and the elapsed time here. Boom. And so you'll notice that we called head just so we could see the first five rows here. All of that looks nice. And we're going to grab the uh, delay. And that all looks good. So right now, what we have is we've got two new data frames. We've got X, which is our features. This is everything that we're going to use to try and do our predictions. And then over on the Y side, this is the value that we're now trying to predict. So given the, um, uh, given the distance and the amount of time that it took, how late is that? That's, that's what we're trying to set up here. Now, what we need to do in order to be able to feed this into a model and start to, to train that up is we need some testing data and some training data where again the testing data is going to be used to validate all of the assumptions. The training data is going to be used to build up that model. We're going to use that nice little helper function here of train test split. And then we're going to set up our X train and X test, Y train and Y test. And we're going to pass in the X and Y. Again, our X is going to be our, our features. Our Y is going to be what it is that we're trying to predict. We're going to set up 30% as the test size and then the random state of 42. And so now when I run this and I take a look at the shape for that X train, what we're going to notice is 21,000 rows inside of there. And when we look at the test, what we're going to notice is 9,000 rows inside of there. So you'll notice that we now have 30% of our data that's going to be set up as testing, and we're going to have 70% of our data that's set up as training. Now, if you're anything like me, and I know I am, you might be looking at that real quick and going, hey, wait a minute, those numbers don't seem to line up. You have 30,000 rows, shouldn't it be 20 and 10? Remember, we didn't say a third, we said 30%. So 30% of 30,000 is 9,000. Um, maybe it was just me that got caught on that. Maybe you're looking at that and going, oh, okay, yeah, that makes complete sense. Um, either way, there you are. So those are our couple, of, uh, our couple of numbers. And then what we'll also notice, if I go in and grab the head of train, for example, that I did, in fact, get back completely random rows on the train side. And then if I took a look at Y, I'm going to see the exact same thing. So there's our train uh, and test, again, the, uh, the shape on both of those. And then what you're going to notice is on the, uh, on the head that, again, we're getting our random IDs. But I do want to point out this simple fact, or this fact here, that you'll notice if I do this, I can actually go X um, train um, head, boom, boom. There we go. Let's go ahead and run this. Is, and I'm going to just draw on the screen, make it a little easier. Whoops, let me launch, zoom it real quick. There we go. So up at the very top there, this is my uh, Y. 
and then down below that's our X. And what I want you to notice here is that the IDs line up. And that's important. So then that way, because we've split all of our data up, I've got my, my features over here, I've got my labels over here. Again, what's going to drive the prediction? What it is that we're trying to predict? I've now got that in two separate data frames. We need to be able to, at some point, bring all of those together. That's what that ID column is going to do for us. And that's why all of that matches up. OK. Now that we've got the data ready to go, let's see how we could begin to train up a model.